everyone, I'm Brooke. Today I'm going to be showing you my Coldplay collection. I've been a fan for about 12 years now, so I have quite a lot of stuff to show. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff that I won't get to put into this video or that I've forgotten that I even have. And a lot of things that I made myself or are maybe sort of Coldplay adjacent, like the love buttons or the um, Made With Love in Brazil bracelets from the Viva era. So gonna do my best to show you what I've got in as little time as possible. I'm gonna start with the CDs first, the most obvious thing. So the first thing is Brothers and Sisters EP. Now this is of course just like I bought it out of Walmart. It's not <laughs> anything super special. It's a great EP. I would say my favorite song from this is Only Superstition. And this is one of the few discs that I have of Coldplay's that aren't the normal albums or the live albums. I, I don't really collect the singles at the moment, um, maybe in time. Next up we have Parachutes, Coldplay's first album, but the second Coldplay album that I ever owned. And it shows, remember that I've been a Coldplay fan for 12 years and when I started getting into Coldplay, I was 13. I didn't know how to take care of pretty much anything so you'll see that the cover comes off and there's no more prongs here to hold the disc in this is maybe one of my worst kept cases out of the collection um unsurprisingly the actual worst kept is probably the first cd that i got which you'll see in a little bit but now up next is a rush of blood to the head this one's a little better <laughs> than the other one. The cover still comes off, but at least all of the prongs are in there to hold the disc in. And this was the third Coldplay album that I ever got. So when I was choosing which one to get as the second one, it was between A Rush of Blood to the Head and Parachutes. And I ended up going with Parachutes, I think, for Shiver and Everything's Not Lost, but it was a tough decision to make. Next up, we have Coldplay Live 2003. This case, again, is falling apart. <laughs> it has this little insert, there's the Coldplay boys, and there's all of their albums that existed to that date. I love looking at stuff like that. So this has the DVD in it, and then it has the CD on the other side as well. I know there's a version of it um, that is more like a DVD case. Um, I don't know if I've ever... I don't know if I've ever seen those in stores anywhere, maybe at like an FYE, but I just have the CD case. Um, I prefer these so that I can keep them all together anyway. Remember when I said that the worst kept CD case was the first Coldplay album that I ever got, X and Y? I don't think I was lying. This doesn't even have part of the case. It's just completely gone. It doesn't stay on at all. There's no... Um, things on the side here. At least a few of the prongs are still there to hold it in, but most of them are missing. Um, but this was the very first Coldplay album I ever got in 2005 for Christmas. My mom bought me this, and I had started listening to Coldplay a little bit before then, um, but once Speed of Sound came out. I can't even figure out how this goes on. <laughs> So this was the very first Coldplay album that I got, and to this day, it's still one of my favorites. It's uh, my favorite tied with Milo Xyloto. Um, I just love it so much, and yeah, it's weird to think about, like, where would I be today if it wasn't for this little thing? Where would any of this stuff be? Not in my house. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe it still would be. Maybe it's destiny. Next up we have Viva La Vida or Death and All His Friends, and this is actually the Prospects March edition, so it has the album and the EP. For like a year or two after the album came out, I actually didn't own either of these as physical copies, only digitally through iTunes. Um, my friend Diana, who I met on Coldplaying, actually bought me this and sent it to me, so yay! Thanks to her, it's part of my collection. I mean, it still would have been part of my collection, just not physically. And now, keeping it in the Viva La Vida era, I have left, right, left, right, left, with the green butterfly on the front and the pink butterfly on the back, and neon orange CD. Yay! I was so happy to get this because I got it at, at my very first Coldplay concert, 
which was just an incredible night to begin with. And to like have this CD that they give out at the end was really cool. And uh, sort of like the start of them trying to do more for the fans to make them feel like a part of one whole experience. Every Teardrop is a Waterfall. This is actually the only Coldplay single that I have a physical copy of. I originally bought it digitally. Um, you know, Every Teardrop is a Waterfall and Major Minus are on this one. And there was an edition that was sold on iTunes that had Moving to Mars. And I was just in Target one day, saw this, and thought, you know what, I'm gonna spend a few more dollars to get this physical copy. Because really you don't see Coldplay singles like this in stores. Um, it was kind of a rare thing. Not that it was rare, not that this particular <laughs> single was rare, um, but it's just weird to find Coldplay singles in retail stores like that. We have my other favorite Coldplay album, Milo Xyloto. This um, is in the paper cover. It's actually part of the pop-up book, um, which I'll show you in a little bit. It's behind me. Um, but I keep it outside. I keep the disc outside so I can keep it with the rest of my albums. Um, I love this one. Love it. Love it. Milo Zalato is one of my favorite Coldplay albums, so of course I have Live 2012 as well. I kind of wish that they had a tour diary in this one like they do in Live 2003, but I still love those little segments with the guys talking. It, I just, I would listen to them talk all day about like nothing. Honestly, I would. And I would probably pay like 10 bucks for a CD of it. <laughs> it's sad, but it's true. Well, we've gone through the first five LPs, so of course, now we have LP6, Ghost Stories. And being an American, I bought the Target edition of this album, which comes with All Your Friends, Ghost Story, and O Reprise as the bonus tracks, which were later released um, along with, I think it was maybe a Sky Full of Stars single, or a Sky Full of Stars EP. <laughs> and this one has the cover on the, on the outside of the case. <laughs> Um, and you can see, though I haven't been going through with the last couple of discs, because they were mostly just the paper um, cases, you can see that this case is in much better condition than any of the others. It's like almost mint condition. Um, I take good care of my stuff now. <laughs> I promise. Wouldn't you love it if there was a live album for every single era that existed? Wouldn't that be great? But so far we only have the three and this is the third one ghost stories live 2014. this is just all ghost stories songs the entire album ghost stories is an album that i have a hard time listening to sort of casually because of how sad it is and how personal it is to chris but it's still like such a great album in my opinion i like it a lot <laughs> i know not everyone else does but that's okay and last but not least a head full of dreams. So this has the paper cover, kind of like Ghost Stories does. This portion has the collage image, and then the CD itself, the booklet, has the Flower of Life. And on the inside, the disc also has the Flower of Life, but it's shiny. Although not quite as shiny as the tour book, which I will show you in a minute. But yeah, as Coldplay's last release, this is the last album that is part of my collection for now until Kaleidoscope EP comes out. If that has a physical release, I don't think it's actually been announced whether or not it will have a physical release. And if it doesn't, then I'm just going to burn a CD and stick it in a jewel case and make my own physical copy of it. So like I said before, I don't collect Coldplay singles and I'm definitely not a vinyl collector, but I happen to have a couple that were either given to me or seemed like things that I should buy. So first up, I have two different versions of parachutes. One is um, just the one from Coldplay's website that again, my friend Diana bought me. And the other one is the um, exclusive Barnes & Noble Orange Edition. I haven't opened either of these because I have no way to play them anyway, so what's the point? May as well just keep them closed. And what I find interesting is that you can see from the back that the colors are slightly different. So the blues don't quite match. I think the Barnes & Noble one is a little bit brighter. And then I also have A Rush of Blood to the Head, which again, Diana gave me. She sent me so much of this stuff and I was like, go, what are you doing? But thank you. 
And this is not a vinyl, but it has a vinyl in it. Like I was saying before, this is the Milo Xyloto pop-up book. My cover for it is a little beat up because um, it sort of everything sits on top of it in my collection. But this has in the back um, a spot where the CD is supposed to go. You can see over here. And it has this fancy hypno disc. I don't think it's called a hypno disc. I just called it that myself. And if I was going to love something more than the CD itself, it's probably this book. This is an incredible book. If you have never seen it before, it pops up with all of the little symbols from the different songs. And inside, it's just a bunch of different little journal entries from Chris um, during the recording. We have some of the lyrics pages, some drawings. There's the pop-up again. <laughs> Got some pictures of the boys in concert. So that's the Milo Zalito pop-up book and also the end of the vinyl that I have. I think this video is getting kind of long, so I'm only gonna go through a few more things. I could talk probably all day about this stuff, but I don't wanna waste your time. <laughs> So I've been to three official Coldplay concerts, one Viva La Vida, one Milo Salto, one A Head Full of Dreams. Technically two for A Head Full of Dreams era, but the second one was the Made in America concert where I didn't even buy tickets for it. I stood outside of the fence and tried to look at the band through the fence. So I don't totally count that one, but. This is the Viva La Vida tour book. It's a little beat up because I was 16 when I went to that concert. We were right up on the sea stage in the lawn section and we had our stuff kind of laid out. So as people were getting closer and closer while the band were playing, um, stuff sort of got crushed. <laughs> so it's not in the best condition, but it's uh, a, a nice memory, right? And this has, these are starting to fall out a little bit, I think, because it's getting so old now, but these have postcards in them, postcards from far away. It actually says that on the postcards themselves. And then just normal tour book stuff. Here's a picture of Brian Eno. Everyone loves him. <laughs> Pictures of boys playing. There's the lyrics. We got these giant pictures of Chris, <laughs> etc. Milo Xyloto in the middle of this one. Well, this this is cool because the cover folds up and it has the nice graffiti picture. And this is actually, the, um, the Viva La Vida one is really papery and this one is a little like thicker, maybe more, I don't know what the material is called, but it's not just paper. And again, lots of artwork. This one has the stickers in the middle, which um, the pop-up book also has stickers and stencils. I didn't show you guys that, and it comes with a little poster, but that's too much stuff to talk about. <laughs> and I told you this was shiny. This is the A Head Full of Dreams tour book. Super, super shiny. It's like made of the same material as the Milo Salato one, which is only marginally shiny. And what's in the middle of this one, anything? Here's this huge page on Chris Martin. The page for Misty, that's cool. Or she's on page. And the middle of this one also has stickers, just like the Milo Zalato album. So that's pretty cool. Believe in love. There's a picture of Phil Harvey chilling by a bike. So last thing I'll show you, I have the first issue of the Milo Zalato comics. But what's so special about this one is that I actually got to meet Mark Osborne last year. He's a filmmaker who works with Coldplay on the Milo Zalato concept that was going to be a film and it became the comic books instead, as well as the Hurts Like Heaven video. He directed that. I got to meet him and I got him to sign my copy. It says, to Brooke, so glad you like this, Mark Osborne. And he's done a lot of other really cool stuff in film also. So. I'm like kind of just a general fan of his and the fact that he worked with Coldplay makes it even better. So I would say this is probably the only issue of Milo Zalato that exists that has Mark Osborne's signature on it and it belongs to me. Bam. Awesome. Super cool. Super cool. So that's my collection for today. If you guys are interested, I can make another video talking about more of the Coldplay stuff that I have. There's plenty to talk about. I have my harmonica and my guitar pick and this nice um, framed 
artwork behind me that I could briefly discuss if you so wish, let me know. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching this video and I hope you didn't fall asleep. I didn't fall asleep, so just, just throwing that out there. <laughs> Bye. Next up we have Parachutes, Coldplay's second album, but first album, but the second one. Okay, I just messed that up. God. Now there's like video recording of me saying that Parachutes is Coldplay's second album. That's not, I know it's not. I just said it wrong. <laughs> so I don't, I'm not a vinyl collector either, but I have a couple of these discs that, discs? Is that correct? I don't think so. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting.